Okay, it is 12.15 in London on the 14th of November 2016. Thank you very much for attending this CMC Markets Weekly Charting Analysis with myself, Jasper Lawler. As per usual, just going to run through the, the risk warning screens. Please, please have a quick browse through those. Well, obviously, been uh, been quite the wild week in markets, to say the very least. Shock U.S. election result caught many people unawares. And so, obviously, we want to discuss where things head from here. Um, many people surprised at the positive secondary reaction in markets. Obviously, we've got the initial sell-off in the in the dollar and in stocks but it didn't last too long and now we're talking about a fresh record high for the Dow Jones Industrial Average today on Monday <coughs> and we obviously already, we, uh, we already saw one last week now things are sl looking slightly different in European stocks politics obviously playing an increasing role interestingly though the British pound not on the the awkward end of the politics at the moment. It's already had its fair share, and now markets looking ahead to things like the Italian referendum next month and the French and German elections next year. In just quickly, uh, this is obviously the CMC markets platform we've got going here. But just in quickly, in terms of a look ahead to next week, this is on our. CMC Markets news and analysis page. We've got our weekly earnings calendar here. So if you're interested in the the big corporate news, we had that all all set up here. You know, today in the on the on the FTSE, um, Taylor Wimpy uh, amongst the uh, the big ones reporting, but obviously still the uh, the tail end of the U.S. reporting season to go. Mostly the big U.S. retailers um, alongside Salesforce, one of the um, interesting tech names we've um, done a small write up on some of those and obviously we've got Royal Mail as well probably the probably the biggest um, UK company to report this week on the economic side obviously always revert to our um, market calendar here um, I'm not going to go through it here but the the main economic data this week will be US retail sales and US inflation and a flood of UK data which for whatever reason with uh, in the last couple of months all the UK data seems to have congregated into one week so we've got retail sales inflation and unemployment and wages data all for the UK this week giving you a bit of context to that in terms of market let's just quickly pull up this dollar index chart so here we are um, we've just we've hit a hundred today in the dollar index. That's obviously a huge psychological level, and uh, not surprisingly, it's a short-term sell-off from there. So benefit of hindsight, you've had a cheeky little sell order in at a hundred. It's such a big round number. You know, you'd uh, you'd have gamed yourself 30 pips off that. Um, but you know, obviously the trend is higher in the dollar now. Um, you know, this was obviously um, the initial sell off in the dollar reaction uh you know and subsequently you know we've been moving higher post post the election you know the general idea here being that um while obviously Donald Trump is controversial in many ways if you strip out what he is likely to push for what he can actually kind of get through in congress uh, actually a lot of the, the proposed policies are, are quite business friendly tax cuts being the, the first and foremost obvious one you know the um, the US has needed some tax reform for a while now uh, that's been difficult under a democratic president which you know you know obviously left and right politics you know on the left generally generally preferring more efforts at redistribution of income through higher taxes uh, on the right of the spectrum not so much um, more in favor of tax cuts you know lower taxes typically lower spending as well so it's the the spending side of thing that's getting a lot of attention at the moment the um, 
the possibility of infrastructure spending has been one of the reasons why the the Dow has been doing way very, very well. It's been companies like Caterpillar that have really taken off um, on the prospect of more fiscal stimulus from the government. That, I would argue, is probably one area that's going to be a little bit difficult for uh, the Donald to get through because, as I said, the nature of the Republican Party is generally a bit more fiscally conservative, small government style um, thinking, uh, and that's what they were elected on, so they're not necessarily going to give that all up just because it's a Republican president. Um, you know, obviously one of the biggest concerns being trade barriers, and I would say, you know, one of the, some of the biggest gainers, uh, some of the biggest fallers, rather, are um, things like uh, Ford and, and GM, so the big autos, uh, companies, also like uh, the big technology companies, Apple, etc., that are trying to push into China, which obviously was at the receiving end of a lot of the Donald Trump rhetoric during the campaign, um, if he actually follows through on those promises, which I think is, you know, you know um, on, the, on the China front, I just think it will be difficult because it's a, um, it, you know, it's basically, there's no, it's not all one way between the US and China. China buy a lot of US treasuries. Um, obviously, uh, US consumers benefit from cheap Chinese goods Obviously, they lose out because you know the the manufacturing of those goods, the jobs have shipped abroad, which is you know a lot of what Donald got in on. So, okay, so maybe big tariffs on imports from China would uh, would possibly lead to more jobs at home, but uh, would also lead to huge higher prices, and, and you know the average U.S. consumer would not be too happy about that. And it would be that that negative effect which would hit through first. And does um, Donald Trump, like any other politician, really have the the gumption to follow through on something that's going to be you know negative in the short term for for potentially long term benefits, uh, which a lot of people dispute the long term benefits. You know the general economics consensus is that free trade is best. <coughs> so a lot of um, a lot of question marks, but still at the end of the day, uh, this is the price action in the US thirty. Um, you know, this was the range that we were contained in. Obviously, huge volatile breakout that just, um, you know, made it to the, you know, we could probably draw a line, you know, draw our support through here. And, um, you know, this was obviously, you know, this low here, little false breakout there, the, the touch there. And obviously, we perfectly stopped there. Um, you know, you'll notice I actually literally drew my line on this low first. Um, and, you know, that is perfectly where the market stopped. So, you know, congrats. You know, I'm gonna and I'm gonna show you a few of these. I'm sure some you'll have seen them already. But there's a few examples where if you just had a little resting order in, at a you know a decent few percentage points away from the market, uh, you'd be loving life. Dollar yen being another really standout example. So at the moment, it's a little bit hard to, to see where we go from here. You know, obviously it's been such a volatile movement, but you know, my, my bias here is that okay, the in terms of the, the US markets, the, the bias has flipped to the upside here. Now obviously we're looking fairly overbought, but that can happen for a sustained period in an uptrend. You know, I'd imagine that you we're, we'd do a bit of a pullback, but it probably won't be go too much further than uh, these old highs. You know, we're still very much in a an uptrend with the break of these highs, but what we have to be aware of here is that we have we have kind of broken a trend, uh, but we've pushed back above it. So it's a bit, you know, the 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 uptrend was thrown into question by the break of this trend, but obviously it's kind of unwound that now. So. <coughs> um, you know, things could head both ways. Obviously, they always can, but you know, my bias is. With break of new highs, that's, that's showing the market strength. I'm, I'm expecting it to continue. Um, maybe we do take out these these peaks here, because it wouldn't take a massive retracement just to drop back to maybe 18650. But then that 18370, which was the, uh, the the top of this range that we were chopping around in for a number of weeks, that I, w I would I would be looking to to hold. So again, looking looking for potential bounces from here and then here. 
below there then it looks like we're back into range trading and you can see us coming right back down to these lows and you know but then back and forth again so I've jumped straight across to the US obviously with the Trump mania um, that was always natural but if I do go back to the uh, to, to UK stocks a slightly different picture obviously and again the, the technicals have held up quite well you know we've had this line of support on here for a while this was what I first highlighted where the um, you know a, a, a swing low had been taken out to the downside and I was looking for the um, for the drop you know that drop did take place didn't end up taking out the lows found some support on this rising trend line went right back up to that very same line um, you can say this line, you know, this area of support here also kind of works, but obviously we've got that big volatile spike up in the election last week. Um, so again, it's it, it's slightly different to, to the nature of the US move where we're much closer. We obviously, we took out the, the highs. We never took out the highs and we respected this downsloping trend line and we've now eaten up a fair bit of that rebound. So based on the current market structure, I'm I'm imagining that we're probably going to come back to test test this trend line again, and it's just going to be a test of as to how far we come back down from that big move higher. We we took out the this peak here, but we yeah we we found quite nice resistance. So I think probably what we're looking for here is just some some way to assume that the breakout higher is going to continue so it's we obviously found support thereabouts at the 61.8 um, we're, we're back into filling this little small gap at the moment so it's going to be probably somewhere in here if the market is going to hold up is where we're looking for our you know that's uh, that's our kind of main support zone you know why are we looking for the market to push higher well more you know i would say that probably us stocks are in a position to outperform at the moment but um you know it will be unlikely for the the FTSE 100 to fall off a cliff uh, while us markets are pushing into record highs these things generally correlate a bit more strongly than that um you know that is unless the uh the european markets are you know kind of telling the truth here and, and you know the US stocks are you know just a bit late to the tail of the markets rolling over that could prove to be the case one of the things that obviously we're watching at the moment if I just jump away from stocks at the moment is uh, this move in bond markets most pronounced in uh, in gilts you know we've obviously had a big drop here into this support zone if I go even further out you can see it's this long-term zone of support here that we're now sitting in just above this rising trend line so we could be nearing the end of this correction but if this uh, this bond sell-off keeps gathering pace um, that you know the, the the correlation between bonds and equities has been positive over the last couple of years so you know this you know bonds could be about to lead equities over the edge And it's not just uh, you know a lot of people referencing gilts and Brexit and things, but really it's not it's not uh, just gilts. You can see that actually treasuries and gilts moving pretty much at the same lick at the moment. Um, treasuries, the, fe the nice little trend line bounce example there. Mm. You know we had the rising trend line, broke the trend line, came back test, didn't work that time, did work that time, but our markets have rolled over. So congrats to anyone who sold on that one. Um, I can't say I can't say I did, but obviously now we're pushing back down into a fairly clear cut support down at 126 in Treasuries. So this will where we've already approached now is an area to expect potentially some sort of support coming back into the market. Let's have a look at Germany. Again, I mean, we've uh, we're still in this trading range, and it's 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 worked remarkably well. Uh, we've come we've come off the top of the range at the moment uh, for a second time. Obviously, that the volatile election day took us down out of the range. 
um, so it took us below this this support here below the moving average so anyone buying at the bottom down here theoretically would have already taken profits up here so ha well I suppose yeah if you if you're looking to TP at the top of the range here you would have suffered this big drawdown before you got there I believe yeah so <coughs> that um, you know that's just an example of uh, sometimes you can get the idea right but uh, you know when you're trading around a big volatile day like the election you know suddenly the technicals can be thrown off temporarily and so if you were long down here you made it this far but you you know you got stopped out maybe at the bottom of the range before it eventually went to where you expected that's definitely a tough one I'm going to jump over to dollar yen just because that's another example I'm interesting to kind of show you in terms of where orders could be placed but again it's a would have been difficult in reality to play it and I certainly can't say I did <coughs> so we were t I was talking about dollar yen pushing higher um, you know we're talking about the triangle breakout here here's the height of the triangle um, here's the breakout the projected target for that is 110 as we mentioned in last last week's webinar, um, you know we talked about the fact that moving averages were spreading out. It looked like the trend was pushing higher, but you know what ended up happening is that the market dropped below this support that I had held here, dropped right back to the 78.6 fib. You know, and this little breakout right here within the triangle. So had you had a resting order down there you know you'd have made several hundred pips in just the space of a few hours you know had you been long from down here with a stop beneath the low you know obviously this is this is a complete disaster because you know you, we're up there towards the target already but you got wiped out by those volatile conditions so it's you know if that did happen to you, you know, I'm sorry if you had the order resting well done um, the lesson to take away is that you know when we have a big volatile event coming up you need to adjust your stop placement or just you know take yourself out of the market, but obviously the when doing when you're doing that, you you minimise the opportunity for taking advantage. The other the other factor here is I suppose that um, you know if you are expecting that bigger range of volatility, you know when you're buying, naturally you just push your buy order lower. You know if there is that possibility of the market swinging around in that bigger band. Um, so if you did originally have your buy position at the 50% or the 61.8, you think, well, okay, we've got the US election, that really could send markets haywire. You know, let me push it down to the 78.6. But as we stand, I mean, things playing out quite well. We're in a clear uptrend as the as the, the moving averages and the and the, the higher prices would would tell us. Um, we're obviously at this key level of resistance at the moment. Um, you know the the top of this triangle so wouldn't be surprised to see a pullback from the kind of 108 area but I'm still imagining that we um, we do get to this 61.8 extension from this uh, you know, if we're looking at this as 100% that's 61.8% of that then we've got the triangle 100% ex uh, extension in the middle and then beyond that for the more aggressive target around 111 we've got uh, this move measured from the breakout above So with the with the dollar hitting uh, 100 and obviously dollar yen breaking out, um, euro dollar breaking down, which we'll have a look at in a sec, uh, the the US CPI data I think could be very significant this week because part of the idea here is that uh, Donald Trump's infrastructure spending um, <coughs> is going to add to already a kind of reflationary trend. Um, inflation generally quite good for stocks, uh, not so good for um, for the bond market typically uh, you know you'd expect that the Fed to start raising rates at a quicker pace um, you know higher yields obviously bond prices go down so if we do see inflation continue to move higher in the US obviously that supports the case for a US rate rise and also supports a pay the, the case for higher inflation generally and maybe a faster pace of rate rises next year from the Fed.
and obviously they can they can afford to do more rate rises without the risk of sending the economy lower if the economy is being propped up by fiscal spending and like an infrastructure program by by the Donald. Mm -hmm. So if we have a look at uh, the euro here, now the euro sparked into life after months of us talking about it being very difficult to trade. I mean, it's still v sort of in a range, but uh, you know, obviously the this move down here got heavily retraced, characteristic of a kind of range market. Uh, but we've taken out the lows, and and this now starting to look like a market turning lower. You know, if you um, take this kind of broad section of price action we're still kind of within it so we can't get too excited yet you know really when the euro can really spark into into life is if we're going to get down below that 105 while we're above 105 we're still kind of in range bound conditions but i would say just you know this we're in that sort of we're still in that 105 to maybe 116 on the top side price range but if you if you just kind of draw a, a trend through something like this you have to say that the, the slight bias was higher um, came down to, and then you would expect higher prices from here but that didn't happen um, actually what we got was more like a um, lower highs and obviously eventually we came off these peaks here off the trend line and we've rolled lower so this to me at least is targeting us down to to 105 because the from this generally bullish bias we've turned it now into a lower bias <coughs> now why is that well obviously the dollar is strengthening you know if you just look at today i think the move down in the euro that's just it's a bit less. Um, I think it was it was in line, but the strengthening of the dollar kind of in line with the um, the weakness in the euro. So to some extent, just pure dollar strength. Uh, also, you could argue to some extent some um, uh, political uncertainty shifting to Europe. Um, notice how the euro is down 0.6, the pound's only down 0.3 and change. So <coughs> um, the pound relatively stronger obviously euro pound falling you know i think that's maybe a a, a read, readdressing of the political shift from uh, the uk where the pound has felt, felt the brunt of uncertainty around brexit uh now we're looking ahead as i mentioned at the start of the webinar to the the italian referendum and uh <coughs> and to the france and german elections next year and just thinking well okay we've had two uh arguably um, the beginnings of a trend towards um, popular results where, with with Brexit and the U.S. election, you know, if that same trend is going to continue into Europe, which clearly there's a risk there. A lot of populist parties on the rise in Europe, even before those two election results. Uh, then, really, the political risk is is now with Europe, uh, and that would mean a, a weaker euro. <laughs> So let's have a quick look at sterling while we were mentioning it. <coughs> so obviously uh, here's the flash crash. So we're back. Um, we were back above flash crash uh, type levels. Is that right? Or when did that start? We're in that sort of vicinity anyway. Um, you know, this was the, the big flash crash. Uh, we're now looking a bit more orderly to the upside. <coughs> we obviously t took out this little interim high, um, came down. We've up, we're, we're testing that old level now. Uh, we're, we're down through this resistance area, so it's chance that we perhaps drift down to. It's not what, not what I had in mind. We've got a bit of a kind of supportive trend through here. Um, so you'd be looking for the market to, you know, if you're looking for this uptrend to continue to to find a base somewhere in the vicinity that's already tested <coughs> um, in order for a move through 127 and, and fully recuperating that uh, the flash crash <coughs> given that the 61.8 worked quite well as a an area to pull back from this drop um, 
you know, I was also using these lows over here. Um, you'd make maybe just a, above 127 and change if you're using that. You know, if you're using this peak over here, or even this peak, then you're putting your uh, a next potential resistance up around uh, 120, or just above 128, really. <laughs> Okay, and uh, yeah, one of the um, completely, I would say, almost unrelated to the election, although accelerated by the strength in the dollar, has been the the moves in the oil market. Uh, been looking really soft. <coughs> so obviously, we weren't able to take up those two highs. We've been mentioning that for a couple of weeks now. <coughs> um, this was a this was a big level at 45 in Brent. Uh, we dipped through it, got a little bit of a bounce, and now we've just dropped straight through it. So this is looking uh, pretty pretty bearish to me. Yes, there will be some Fibonacci's um, in this area, the, the 78.6. But to me, the fact that we've taken out this low here... Um, in the context <coughs> of this uh, this trend break... With the, uh, the the shorter term moving average now dropping below uh, the longer term, it looks to me like we're heading down to to test these lows here, and um, and potentially below that. It obviously depends on how things pan out with OPEC, but it's increasingly that that OPEC deal is starting to unravel at the moment. And uh, and there are signs that U.S. production is on on the up too. Gold was obviously one of the the standout ones for for trading. Um, much pretty much the opposite to to equities where we had the initial flight to to safety, but we hit uh, hit the highs here from September. And the market rolled over pretty quickly, and now we're at the the weakest we've been um, in several months. Um, this was the Brexit jump. Well, obviously, we got some pullback from that Brexit move, <coughs> but we're now lower, and it does look like we're heading down for a test of one two hundred. And really, that's just the big line in the sand is 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 the twelve hundred mark. Through there, then the gold doesn't have too much in the way of support before uh, 1,100. So signs that gold is looking pretty soft here. I mean, just again, moving averages are a lagging indicator. They're not perfect by any stretch. Um, but you can see that when the short term is above the the longer term average, you get some, some chop in a sideways market. That's when they stop working. But um, when it's above, you know, okay, you can sort of generally see that we've turned lower here and we've had some bounces but they've been sold into and the trend continues to go down with this shorter term below the the but the um the higher term moving average so <coughs> not all the short trades are going to work it goes without saying but um to me my my bias at the moment is is to the short side but obviously that's um you know how long that can sustain will depend on on 1200 The one that I don't always mention in these webinars, but certainly worth mention this time, is uh, the price of copper. This is a short-term chart, so I'll actually start. With, I'll do a bit opposite to how I normally do. This was a huge move lower intraday, so we were up there. We were up seven percent at one point on Friday. We ended up closing the day down. I think we maybe actually finished the day roughly positive, or at one point it was down one and a half percent on Friday from a move of up 7% and 8 plus percent uh, daily range is, is pretty huge and it's certainly something worth standing up and paying attention to there will be people buying the dip here um, assuming that the higher prices continue but to my mind this is a sign that sellers came in on mass and sold the market down now and it's going to recuperate to uh, you know to, to get the prices back to where those sellers want to sell again now it could get up to our kind of sell zone up here in the 61 to 78 percent retracement area, but at the moment it's not got through that that previous peak. You know we've we've 
we've come away from there you know this is the support so we've bounced from there we're in this range um, any opportunities up here you know that could again call the top should we get through then you know then obviously we're looking back back up into this sort of two six six sixty seven type area maybe um, but then if we so okay we don't take price action by itself in, in this case I almost would <coughs> Uh, you know, we saw a big move down. We took out the, that short-term support. You know, now we've kind of taken out some of those immediate short sellers down here, um, looking for more liquidity to sell. <coughs> but if we do look at where we're generally at with this, um, this is our this is a nice nice little triangle that we had in copper. Taking that as the height of the triangle. Uh, the height of the trunk, the the full 100% extension of that height was here, so we went a bit above it. You know, the momentum was so extreme; it's not, you know, we're not expecting this to turn on a dime necessarily. Uh, but, you know, once we did exceed that level, we didn't go much further, and the market turned around massively. So that's one one area to believe that this is significant. If we pull out to the weekly chart, there's no obvious highs and lows, I would say, uh, but if we do pull out the good old Fibonacci again <coughs> then uh, you know we're pretty pretty darn close to the 78.6 and you know if you're using you know a 76 percent Fib I'm, it's almost bang on that <coughs> so couple of Fibonacci pattern based reasons to think that this would have been an area of resistance in copper and we've seen a big sharp reaction down taking out some short-term support um, so my default assumption here is that we push a bit higher and then roll over again um, this is a strong pattern um, you know you could got to say that the the trend for, for copper has very much shifted but I'm just talking about you know where do we move in the next few days um, you know, I think we're going to get a of a pullback in this what was a very big move the, I think it was the biggest it ended up being the biggest weekly move in copper in, in 30 years so understandable that we'd have a volatile finish to it so I'm going to call it a day there thank you very much for attending everyone good luck with trading this week um, we'll obviously all be Donald watching let's, uh, let's see what happens next and uh, Look forward to talking to you next Monday. Jasper signing out.